Seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay, but I get on Chicago Bulls. I right, it you worked get, out. You get to play with Jesus. It you worked out. <laughs> <laughs> you got. To, I got to play with Jesus, uh, John, and Luke. You know what I'm saying? I got to play on the squad with the Messiah, and win a championship, and have the best experience ever for seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's the way. That's one way of looking at it. It was 1992 when people everywhere got a jolt of inspiration from Gatorade's I Want to Be Like Mike commercial. The one minute television spot featuring highlights of Michael Jordan dunking, playfully jesting, and many attempting to mimic MJ's signature moves all set to a jingle sung by children became not only a household moniker but a belief as well. Even more simply expressed in this commercial are three elements, basketball, joy, and winning. This would be one of many inspiring moments that would lodge in the hearts of many around the world. This is Michael Jordan, the product, the result, and the glory. This video is not to attack Michael Jordan, the man, but rather to dispel the result cherished by many. What makes Sammy run was the question spoken by Ozzie Davis's character in the movie Do the Right Thing, in which the Jordan Force instantly became a pop culture icon. Was it the shoes? Was it the endorsements? Was it the championships? All these elements incited young children, teens, and even grown men and women to flock to basketball courts, Gatorade in tow, for a taste of Michael Jordan greatness. Were they successful? Were they transformed into flying royalty like the commercials intimated? Read the fine print. Results may vary. Did you know that the first advertisement took place in the Garden of Eden? In Genesis 3, we see that the serpent advertised the forbidden fruit with the tagline, You will not surely die. He sampled the fruit in verse 6 so that Eve could see that it was good for food. It was also related that it would make one wise and that it be as gods. The serpent at that point, a flying creature, golden color, could seemingly now talk. The pen of inspiration offers further details of Satan's advertisement. But the serpent continued in a musical voice with subtle praise of her surpassing loveliness, and his words were not displeasing. Instead of fleeing from the spot, she lingered wonderingly to hear a serpent speak. So basically there was music, a promise, a sampling of the product, results, and a tagline. Does this not sound like an advertisement? Not only did Michael Jordan have an impressive career, his endorsements alone made him a commercial spectacle. Jordan brand clothing featuring the coveted Jordan shoe, which has led to many murders since their release, is still worn today even by children who never saw Michael on the basketball court. His flying acrobatics and his unmistakable shoe designs earned him the name Air Jordan, or his royal airness. Who is the Prince of the Air in the Bible? Where in time passed, he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Ephesians 2, verse 2. Also, in Luke 11:15, we are introduced to the chief or prince of the devils, Beelzebub. This additional name for Satan is translated as Lord of the Fly. The Bible says that you will know them by their fruits or results, and MJ's result reflects wickedness. This embodied spirit drove Mike to compete fiercely, even to the point of degradation of fellow teammates and rivals. His trademark tongue is explained in the word. Against whom do ye sport yourselves? Against whom make ye a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Are ye not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood? Isaiah 57 4. The Jordan brand gives the illusion of immortality living beyond the flesh's limitations. Wasn't this the tagline in the first commercial? Many of the products he has endorsed have the enemy's fingerprint. Gatorade and Rayovac batteries whose symbols are the lightning bolts. Ballpark Franks, Coca-Cola and McDonald's are not foods generally eaten for health or athletic excellence. Most people are enamored by the glorious result of worldwide exposure and riches. Every ad shows Michael smiling and joyous. The enemy has sowed a seed and they wonder, how can I have this happiness, fortune, and immortality? Is basketball a sanctuary? To answer this question, we must look at the authentic to spot the counterfeit. 
Asaph, the chief musician, wrote in Psalms, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Psalm 77, verse 13. The original sanctuary was a shadow of things to come. Christ dying on the cross was the end of the ceremonial law, and now we can all come directly to God through Jesus Christ. The pattern of the Christian walk is symbolized in the sanctuary, and we shall see how the devil has counterfeited it. The Lord's sanctuary was made of animal skins, fine linens, beautiful craftsmanship, bronze, silver, and pure gold. The structure consisted of an outer court and two compartments known as the holy place and most holy place. The outer court had an altar of sacrifice representing the forfeiture of a life of sin and a laver representing baptism or the cleansing of a life of sin. The holy place had three pieces of furniture. It had two stacks of bread representing the word, the bread of life, a candlestick representing the spirit and a witness to the world, and an altar of incense that represented the prayers of the repentant. This compartment's walls were lined with pure gold and in total is a representation of our refining or sanctification process. The most sacred compartment, the most holy place, consisted of the Ark of the Covenant. If you've seen Raiders of the Lost Ark, you've seen a cinematic representation of this piece. The Ark was overlaid with pure gold and contained manna, Aaron's rod that budded, and the tablets contained the Law of God. This is where the glory of God appeared and it represents our final reconciliation with God, our homecoming. The enemy has recreated this holy structure and repurposed it for man's demise. Let's take a closer look. Denzel Washington's character in the movie He Got Game says to his young son Jesus, yes his name is Jesus, that it's not the skill of a man but the will of a man as he puts him through a grueling workout and has him recite all the things he's going to buy his mom with his future basketball riches. Later on in the film, Michael makes an appearance and gives Jesus his blessing with the phrase, He Got Game. Can you imagine? The sacrificial phase is the sacrificing of the body, time, effort, and most importantly a relationship with Christ. Kobe Bryant, who can easily be credited with emulating Jordan's gameplay, puts himself to what he deemed the 666 workout to prepare for his sanctuary. In 2017, he released a New Age video where he teamed up with a serpent to explain the keys to success via the Muse Cage. His nickname, even more blatant than Michael's, was Black Mamba, one of the world's most deadliest snakes. With 666 and serpents, what spirit does Kobe and many like him embody? We cannot let a game overshadow the immense gift that God gave through the sacrifice of His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Christ desires us to be a living sacrifice for Him because His reward is great. Paul goes on to explain, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. How many of you have done two-a-days, special diets, weight training, or even performance enhancers at the expense of your health to reach levels in this sport? We are to be temperate and tame the flesh for the incorruptible, non-perishable crown of eternal life. The cleansing phase isn't a true cleansing, but rather an outward appearance of clean. This word is used often in hip-hop circles to note a person's new haircut, clothes, or any new item to give the appearance of no spot, wrinkle, or blemish. In the Lord's sanctuary, the priests could not enter into the other compartments without first cleansing themselves in the laver. I remember guys having to wear suits, get haircuts, have good grades, attendance and conduct, or altogether a clean record in order to play in high school. This is the warning of Jesus Christ concerning the corrupt Pharisees. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Through the act of baptism, we accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and are cleansed by the only substance in all the universe that can take away sin, His blood. The Word promises, But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanseth us from all sin. Only raising up from the waters of baptism, dead to your former self and cleansed for sanctification, starts you down the path to true glory. Once you leave the outer court, you advance into the unholy place. This could be any level of gameplay, from middle school to NBA, because this process just repeats at each level with notoriously varying results. 
The bread found in this holy place is money, or more specifically, the God of money. We saw that the bread represented the word, the bread of life, in the true sanctuary, but this bread is mammon. Mammon is a Chaldee or Syriac word meaning wealth or riches. You can find this in Luke 16, 9 through 11. Also by personification, the God of riches, Matthew 6, 24, also again in Luke 16, 9 through 11. NBA Youngboy, an acronym for Never Broke Again, named himself to reflect the irrationally high paychecks that NBA players receive. Despite players earning millions, many have indeed become broke again. Jerseys, meals, cars, jewelry, houses, and shoe deals are all attractive incentives to players and these things add to the clean appearance just as the true word builds upon those fresh from the waters of baptism. Tupac's character and Above the Rim offered material goods to the star player to ensure his commitment to his team. This is a scene often played out on and off screen. The love of or belief in money has disastrous results. The word warns us. For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Many people, but particularly those from lower income families, see athletic prosperity as a way out of their financial situation. None need to go this way, because according to Matthew 6.33, the Lord provides for his children. We are to store our treasures in heaven where they cannot be rust or moth eaten. The candlestick in this counterfeit holy place is also a witness and the spirit of competition. The 15,000 watt stadium lights illuminate the arena revealing the spirit working to some degree in each player. If you've ever witnessed the spirit of competition, it is evident that these are fallen angels working in the flesh of men. Men willing to tear you apart for the win even at the playground level. For those 48 minutes of gameplay, people witness men striving many times violently for the glory. If the spirit that is in you isn't the Holy Spirit, then you have the spirit of the enemy. The devil doesn't care about your body. If he takes over, he will maim and destroy you until you lose all hope in God completely. LeBron James, when playing for the Miami Heat, had shirts that read, Witness. People, particularly the youth, see the lives of these NBA stars and want to emulate them both on and off the court. The Bible says, By beholding we become changed. 2 Corinthians 3.18 Seeds were sown when they saw Dennis Rodman's wild exploits in the news. Pride and arrogance rose when people heard of Allen Iverson's I don't need to practice rent. How many youths found it attractive to smoke weed and play high-paid professional basketball when they discovered Rashid Wallace partook? Sorry Charles Barkley, but we are all role models because no one lives to themselves or dies to themselves. Our light is to direct others to the greatest light, not to esteem ourselves, Matthew 5.16. The word sums it up best by instructing us to Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. A true sanctuary walk will give you a new, selfless heart and the mind of Christ, a true witness to the world. Next to the curtain that divided the holy place from the most holy place was the altar of incense. This curtain or veil is symbolic of Christ's intercession. The smoke ascending was prayer. Let my prayer be set before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Psalms 141.2 Prayer is simply a calling on or crying out to God. People can call on spirits knowingly or unknowingly through the use of drugs and fornication. These two pitfalls, ever present in the NBA, are surefire ways to have demons possess the body. Ever wonder why sporting events are sponsored by alcohol distributors, or why women, and now men, are dancing provocatively in revealing outfits? While researching, a shock to me was the amount of marijuana used by NBA players. Joe Dumars, a 14-year veteran of the league, described the NBA stoner's love for cannabis best in a 1997 New York Times interview. If they tested for pot, there would be no league. The fact is, the drug that has been used by many players, from Bill Walton to J.R. Smith, sends up prayers to the god of this world. The league is not limited to marijuana. As mentioned before, alcohol is very prevalent in the NBA. In 2007, Minnesota Timberwolves power forward Eddie Griffin was killed in a car accident while under the influence of alcohol. He had already had a run-in with the law a year prior when, being possessed, hit a car while driving naked and watching pornography. Lynn Bias, the number two draft pick in 1986, was pronounced dead of a cocaine overdose two days after being drafted to the Boston Celtics. 
playing 82 games per season with very little downtime and numerous injuries leads many to use steroids to combat fatigue and speed of recovery. A former NBA coach had this to say, I'm talking about performance enhancing drugs like steroids, human growth hormone, and so on. It's obvious some of our players are doping. How are some guys getting older, yet thinner and fitter? How are they re recovering from injuries so fast? I met Dennis Rodman a few years ago and saw firsthand the result of overindulgence. Many ancient and modern worship circles use substances to conjure demons. Sorcery in the Bible was translated from the Greek word pharmakeia, which is where we get the word pharmacy. Drugs are a form of sorcery and sorcerers are amongst those who will not inherit the kingdom of God. The high places in the Bible were associated with idol and devil worship. Ancient temples also used prostitutes to put dark spirits into worshipers. One of the worst acts is found in Amos 2.7 involving a father, his son, and the same prostitute. In witchcraft and the occult, nudity is used to open the body for possession and supposedly increase the potency of spellcasting. Does anyone remember the 2015 University of Louisville basketball sex scandal where prostitutes were hired to recruit potential players? This was done so that these players would have a uniform team spirit. The holes are necessary so that the NBA temple or sanctuary provides an effective spiritual atmosphere. Please pray earnestly and fervently for the many players on different levels of experience who are calling on darkness via substance and sexual abuse. Drugs pervert the heart and mind, causing the user to become an enemy of God. Spending years in confusion mixing up darkness for light is no way to live. The sin of fornication is even worse. Paul writes, What? Know ye not that he which is joined unto a harlot is one body? For two saith he become one flesh, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man committeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Fornication creates an unholy union that opens up the possibility for all those involved to be lost. Frequent sexual encounters will diminish the vital life force that we have been given as a gift from God. Pray to intercept these desperate calls to Satan so that everyone from coaches to ball boys abandon the drugs and harlots and pursue the Most High. The last compartment in this false sanctuary is the most unholy place. In here will be found the glory that all seek, worldly honor, the championship trophy and or ring, praise and the idea that you have become a god. In the true sanctuary, glorification is the recognition that God is the creator and we are created. We willingly accept God's order. We desire to live peaceably by his law and have wholly accepted the sacrifice of his son, Jesus. In 2007, Joel Santana released the song, Second Coming, titled after the object of true Christian hope, which he says, I'm my own author. Here's my story. My life's full of pain. Now where's my glory? The hook goes on to say, so glorious, victorious, we take what we want. This song, which was Nike's anthem for the NBA and still resounds in the hearts of many today, sums up the results of a false sanctuary walk, that man can become a god. He prattles, I'm my own author. The word clearly says in Hebrews 12:2 that Jesus Christ is the author and finisher of our faith. Joel says earlier, blood, sweat, and tears dripped all three just to get here. This sounds like the very scenes from the Garden of Gethsemane and Calvary. Christ is the only one in all the universe that has suffered for victory, and through him we can conquer sin and sin's originator. Many decree ball is life, but biblically, Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes by the Father except through him. In fact, the name Michael means, who is like a God, and is another name for Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that MJ's parents named him to be a counterfeit messiah, but as we are seeing, the enemy has capitalized on his namesake. This accomplishment brings fame, fortune, but also emptiness. According to an article in Forbes, that empty feeling is called the arrival fallacy, and it operates according to the premise that as you work towards a goal, you come to expect that you will reach it. Expecting your goal's future success triggers the brain's reward centers, producing a soothing feeling. This feeling continues and you adjust to it so much so that when you meet your goal, it's less satisfying than you expected. And this can develop into an endless cycle of searching for what will make you happy, chasing goal after goal and reinforcing self-doubt. This feeling actually comes from Christ being void in the heart. Christ beckons us to be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Matthew 5:48. Perfect in the Bible is defined as completeness and we can only be complete in Christ. Unlike the Ark of the Covenant that held representation of God's love, trophies and rings are empty idols. They cannot give what God has to offer. 
Beyond emptiness and disillusionment, the ultimate result of this false sanctuary is death. The Bible warns, there is a way that seems right to a man and that way leads to death. Lorenzen Wright, who was set up by his ex-wife Sheila Wright to be murdered for money, is the tragic result of this highly esteemed NBA sanctuary. A close friend and mentor of Lorenzen had this to say about his untimely death. If Lorenzen had never made the NBA, he'd be alive and well right now. Brian Wilson, also known as Bison Deal, shared the same fate when the spirit of covetousness led his brother to murder him. Besides violating the law of God, Christ desires for us to have abundant life and not to die before our time. And yes, there are many NBA stars that are seemingly alive today, but a spiritual death is much worse than a natural death. Michael Jordan has six NBA championships and his glory has been shared with millions. All that has been beheld has had a lasting effect on many hearts and minds, driving them to the mouth of this false sanctuary, being made ready to be devoured. If by now it isn't evident that Satan has repurposed the old sanctuary to garner the worship of millions and to delude and destroy those involved, compare the layout of a basketball arena with the ancient Israelite camp. Notice the remarkable similarities. Michael Jordan has been referred to as the goat. In Leviticus 16, the sins of the Israelite camp were transferred to a goat. This goat represented Satan, who will at the end of time bear the consequences of earth's sins along with his fallen angels. This is why Satanists have adopted the goat as their symbol. In the Bible, music precedes the worship. And how do most games start? The song chosen for the Chicago Bulls in the 90s was Alan Parsons' project, Eye in the Sky. This mystical song, synonymous with Michael's playing days, is a reference to Sirius, a guise for Satan. This sanctuary being equipped with wine in the form of beer and mixed drinks, blood in the form of unhealthy food concessions, and adultery in the form of cheerleaders is a stage set to invoke demons and ensnare its vast congregation through its international telecast of violent competition. The Mayans played a game similar to basketball that was of spiritual significance to them. Everyone from religious leaders to high-ranking government officials would attend these events. Once the game was over, one of the players would be sacrificed. The seed of the Michael Jordan result has entered into the minds and hearts of many whether they are aware or not. The sacrifice for opulent riches, reckless fornication, unchecked vice, and world renown gradually overshadowed the playing of a simple game. The desire to be transformed into a trademarked product clouds the necessity to develop a relationship with the unseen. Many have eagerly entered this sanctuary, having been shown the kingdoms of the world, only to be left fractured and wanting. Who remembers the 1994 documentary Hoop Dreams, where two teens, after being trained for NBA greatness, were left broken, looking to piece their lives back together? This is the real result shared by many who have entered this false sanctuary, hoping to be prospered and immortalized. The 2019 NBA season culminated with the Toronto Raptors winning their first ever championship. I haven't followed the NBA closely in recent years, but there was something peculiar about this triumph. Let's take a look at some of the people and history that were involved in Toronto Raptors' recent crowning achievement. Many professional sports teams are represented by a mascot, usually an animal, symbol, or mythical creature. The Raptors, a fearsome beast, original colors in 1995 were purple and scarlet red. They recently dropped the purple and the only standout color is scarlet red. What's the significance? In Revelation 17 verses 4 and 5, we see a woman adorned in purple and scarlet with the inscription Mystery Babylon on her forehead. She is also riding a scarlet colored beast. This imagery is symbolic and represents the coming together of church and state, a religio-political power. In the Bible, a woman can represent a church and a beast can represent a kingdom. You can find this in Revelation 12, 1 and Daniel 8 respectively. Now let's look at the recent Toronto victory. Canadian native and entertainer Drake took a personal interest in the team this past season. Not only is their training facility a part of OVO Entertainment, Drake's company label, he became the unofficial coach. He was even seen wearing the same hoodie that Tupac's character wore as he coached from the sideline, similar to the scenes from above the rim. The name Drake can be translated as Dragon. In Revelation 13.4, we read that the dragon gave its power to the beast. The sea beast in Revelation 13 is the papacy. Interestingly enough, Drake has portrayed himself as the Pope on different occasions. Plainly, Drake, the dragon, is masquerading as the papacy and is uniting with a scarlet-colored raptor or beast. It gets deeper. Star player Kawhi Leonard received praise for making the winning basket, giving Toronto its first NBA title. Before they claimed the win, Leonard was given the title King of the North. There was even an elaborate mural drawn to commemorate the name. 
In Daniel 11, 36 through 45, the king of the north described is none other than the papacy. In Psalms 48, 2, we see that the God of heaven is the true king of the north. The papacy, and now Drake and Kohai, by extension, are blasphemous caliphates. What a name to be given to Toronto's hero considering the before-mentioned peculiarities. Is the sports world telling us of prophecies that will soon come to pass? The push for church and state, world peace, Sunday sacredness, and climate rest has never been stronger. The papacy's 2015 visit to Congress and the White House was indeed a prophetic foreshadowing of things soon to come to pass. What was portrayed in the 2019 NBA Finals was a blatant warning unrecognized by most but prayerfully realized after viewing this video. If you believe this is too far-fetched, this isn't the first time the papacy has been involved in a major sporting event. Recently, in 2017, Pope Francis made an appearance via satellite and quote-unquote blessed the Super Bowl. Many of these players and entertainers may not be aware of what they are doing, but they've signed away their lives and have allowed for them to be used however the contract holder pleases. We pray that all of these players heed the instruction of the heavenly voice, come out of her, my people. How many have wanted to be like Mike? Don't be embarrassed. The Michael Jordan result gives the illusion of completeness something that everyone desires. Plus, when you've been endowed with the physical ability to play basketball, it becomes tempting to cash in while playing a game you love. Unfortunately, it's not a simple game. Jordan and all those who have been prospered by this sanctuary are peddling lies. If you look into the faces of many of these players, Michael included, you will notice a void and emptiness. Men have gone through great lengths and sacrificed much to attain this result. Sometimes it's not the person themselves desiring it. Parents and coaches are the secondary voice influencing the actions of the impressionable. We know someone whose brother would place a radio in his infant son's crib that played Michael Jordan's game highlights in hopes that some of that MJ magic would be instilled during his precious developmental years. When the Bible says to train up a child, I don't believe this is what it was referring to. May the grace of God abound in that child's life. Is the outcome of this false sanctuary worth having? In regards to becoming a god, the Bible in Genesis 3 doesn't speak favorably about this transformation. To desire to be a god is to take pride in your fallen state. The NBA sanctuary builds upon a man's wicked nature, causing the worshiper or participant to love vice more than virtue. The Bible in Job 18, 5-8 declares, Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and the spark of his fire shall not shine. The light shall be dark in his tabernacle, and his candle shall be put out with him. The steps of his strength shall be straightened, and his own counsel shall cast him down. For he is cast into a net by his own feet, and he walketh upon a snare. A Michael Jordan character cannot stand before God or abide in heaven. Neither can a prideful Allen Iverson character, nor a drug abusive J.R. Smith character. You will not find an openly Masonic Shaquille character, and by the way, basketball was invented by a Freemason. Kobe Bryant is a prime example of someone who successfully emulated the spirit of Michael Jordan, but because of our God-given uniqueness, he fell short of the glory. What does that say about all the others trying to reach the status of Air Jordan? Many in their attempt to become what they believe to be everything have lost their minds, bodies, and direction in life. Some have experienced success, but most have painfully faded into obscurity, becoming a faint name on a shelved roster from years past. They are still sifting through the ruins of a basketball career never realized, asking themselves that infamous philosophical question, what could have been? Rest assured, life doesn't begin or end on a basketball court. God can remove the dark spirit of competition, the arrogance, and the vice gradually collected in this field of organized gameplay. God can repair injuries, shatter dreams, make new memories, and supply new friends and companions. God will remove the noise from your life so that you may be able to hear Him more clearly. Call on the Lord to see where you fit into His plan of salvation, and I guarantee that your playing days will be dwarfed in comparison to the new life that He has for you. Though the heavily commercialized Michael Jordan result has enticed and led many into an unforgiving world, there is another Michael longing to put you back on the narrow road home. Today is the day of salvation, and knowing Christ could not be of any more importance. There is only room for one rock in your life. I attended high school with Amari Stoudemire, a man that was prospered by this NBA temple. 
He was a local pillar of hope for all those striving tooth and nail to be drafted out of high school and go straight into the pros, as Cornell Haynes Jr. puts it. Recently, he has taken a spiritual turn in his life, and we pray that he finds the truth. Interestingly enough, the 2300-year prophecy, the Bible's longest time prophecy, came to pass in 1844. That's not that long ago. The end of this prophecy signified Jesus Christ, our great high priests, move from the holy place to the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary. This monumental move started the judgment of the dead. Judgment of the living will commence soon. The clock is ticking and we are already in overtime. Don't be somebody who goes into a Christless grave over a game of basketball. Forsake the character, demons, and vice gained while competing for vainglory. Silence the voices of parents, coaches, teammates, even girlfriends who are pressuring you to sacrifice the one body you were given, a body that was fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Accept the call from Christ, whatever age you may be, and put your faith in Him and His soon return. There is so much on the line. Do not let the devil play with your heavenly inheritance. Invite the Lord into your heart and be completed today so that you may enter into His courts with praise.